Hello again and welcome to part 4 of Tiger Sport 1050 12,000 mile service. In this one we're going to be changing the spark plugs, the air filter um, and balancing the throttle bodies. So this I would say is not for your amateur. Um, you've got to disconnect various sensors when you come to balance the throttle bodies you need some software such as tune ECU or dealer tool connecting to the bike to a computer so that you can set the throttle balances and if you touch the wrong screws you need to uh, <laughs> you need to pray because uh, I think you'll damage your bike so not for amateurs this is for people who are quite competent it should be easy enough changing spark plugs but on models where you've got the airbox sat on top of the engine etc it's not so easy second thing you need to do is you need somewhere to put your tank that's safe so I've just got this here with a nice towel on the top that loves all any petrol that gets spilt that's where that goes tank on there air filter and spark plugs they are ready so when you change your spark plugs you have to actually set the spark plug gap and the best way to do it is using a, a tool such as this where the little spikes here are different thicknesses for the gap you want and this tool here is what you use to actually bend the outer electrode to the right gap. I'm using the Trium spark plugs they recommend. Some people use I think the Iridium plugs, you don't have to set the gap on them. Um, but I prefer to use what the manufacturer suggests for the uh, for the bike. So I'm sticking with the NGK plugs. It just says it's a Triumph part number, but they're NGK spark plugs. Right. First thing we're going to do is get the tank off. So to take the tank off, there's a lot of screws. There's these screws. The screws in here. This panel comes off, of course the seat comes off and I believe you need to take these pieces off but we'll see as we crack on with it. I've not had the tank off one of these before um, taking it off something like the Thruxton over there that's an absolute doddle on my previous bike, a Suzuki GSX 650F that was a doddle as well. Here there's a lot more fairing to come off. Right, let's get on with it. So you need a 5mm allen screw to get these panels off. With the seat off you'll see you can access this panel to remove it. So that's two, two allen keys here and this pops off. So I have made life a little bit more difficult for myself because I had these spotlights mounted on there. I've had to take all the bracketing off for the spotlights. But these bolts here need to come off. When you've got that bolt out, just a firm pull forwards will loosen this off, allowing you to remove it. Now there are some rubber bungs that can drop out. Um, now this is made a bit more difficult by the fact I've got the engine bars on and one of my rubbers has just shot across the floor. I'll get that back in a tick. Just going to disconnect these indicators. Right, these little fellas tend to fly off when you take the panel off because they're a tight fit and it goes on here on that metal bit. Should we uh, get some gloves on so it goes on there. With all this off, it gives you a good opportunity to clean all the bits you don't normally get to see. So I will be doing that, the whole bike needs a clean but these exposed parts and this for example and the inside of the fairings we can give them all a good clean. Right, other side. So on this one you can see the rubber is missing. So let's go searching for it and here it is. So we'll put that back on here. And again we need to clean that. So. These panels just come off after you've took that screw out with a gentle tug. You can see the retaining bolts there, the retaining pins. So we'll do that on both sides. Right. These panels were pretty hard to get off. 
but you just tip this this down and pull down and they come off through here this gap that's sort of a clip okay now to get the tank off there's this bolt here and there's these two here right the tank is now loose so when you lift this up there's some breather pipes to disconnect and there's the fuel hose to disconnect now that needs really tight grip to push on two pins and remove it i probably won't be able to film it because i'm doing this bit on my own but i'll show you when the tank's off um, also this will still be under a bit of pressure so there may be some petrol spill out so it's a good job that the bike is cold and not hot so i'm going to lift the tank off i'll get all that off then i'll show you the the pipes but the key thing you've got to make sure is i'm gonna have to shift these fairings you've got a clean route to get your tank on where, where you're going to put it um you don't want to be dropping it petrol tank off there was a gotcha which you might have on your bike this set of cables was cable tied to the tank so check that before you try and remove it so on the tank you've got two breather pipes this one and the other one's probably fell down this one there we are and they only go front and back you'll be able to tell that when you put them back on and um, these are things that should be replaced every now and then but these in good condition this is an electrical connector there's two of these now don't know if you can see that little lip but what you have to do to remove these is push that lip in and it releases the connector. I don't think you can see that moving inside there. So you squeeze that in and pull it off and it'll be a tight fit. The same goes with the other connector that's attached to the same bit of cable and they're different so you can't put them on the wrong way, different connectors. But this one again, it has a, a little lever here that you push in and again you can see the mechanism working in there. To remove a petrol tank, you've got this brown clip that you have to push back and then you have to squeeze these sides, the bits in there, you have to squeeze them really, really tight and pull it off. When you put the tank back on, you've got to make sure that's fully on and that that's clipped up because you don't want your petrol leaking out when you're riding. That could be very nasty. Right, so inside here, Inside here is the airbox, and underneath the airbox are the spark plugs. So we've got these sensors to disconnect from the airbox lid, so we can take the airbox lid off. So that's a connector, they're screws, and that's a screw, so we've got to take those off. And then we can undo all these screws, swap the air filter, but we'll give the airbox a clean. Then we have to take the airbox off to get at spark plugs. This is why I'm saying this is not really for an amateur. You're taking a lot of body panels off, as you can see. You're getting into all the sensors and electrics and the fuel system. So think twice before you do this if you're not very confident and experienced. Right, got all the airbox screws out. They were a Torx 15 um, screw on all of those. That's an eight millimeter. And that's the Torx 15. I've put these screws back in because they're what hold the sensors on and uh, it's just less screws to have laying around. All the little screws around the airbox I've put in the tray. Don't forget this fella in here. He'll stop you getting the lid off. But hopefully, there we go. And that air filter's not in bad shape, is it? Let's put this over here. Right, we need to cover these up we don't want to get any crud in there but we are going to have to take this whole airbox off to get up the spark plugs so first thing i'm going to do replace the air filter and here is the replacement air filter so i've covered up those butterfly valve entrances last thing you want to do is drop something in one of them that would be a whole world of pain firm tug out it comes and oh look at that that is dirty and the new one just goes in but i am gonna i'm gonna give that a little clean inside there first just get that dust out 
and the next job is actually removing this box to get at the spark plugs which will mean taking this hose off next job is to remove the air box so if you see here there are some screws down here I don't know if you can see because of these bloody cloths there's some screws down there I'm careful I can just wiggle these out of the way there's one there one there one down there one there one there so there's a few of them to undo and then this whole lot comes off and again we need to put cloths in in there just to stop any debris getting in and just for fun these are a four millimeter allen key whereas everything else has so far has been a torx so i'm gonna loosen those off and then lift the airbox off need to now disconnect the breather hose now these have two little like horns just get your pliers either side squeeze them together and the breather pipe comes off easy and there's another one exactly the same on the front when you refit these make sure these horns are at the top otherwise you make it very hard for yourself to get them off at a later date right you can now get out the spark plugs so these are the fuel injectors we need to disconnect them and pull these out there's the three of them and then the spark plugs come out and go in there but look at all that grot in there we'll give that a clean all right to disconnect the injector you just press this down and pull it off and then to lift these out um there's probably a tool to do it but you need a lot of strength in your fingers so what you've got to do is push the clip down and then what I do is I just start wiggling the seal, wiggling the top backwards and forwards. And then with a finger under here and a grip on there, you've just got to keep wiggling and pulling up. And eventually the coil will pop out. The, like I say, there's probably a tool you can get that will make that a lot easier. This one's going to be difficult because it's not really a lot of room to get your hand in. But um, don't use pliers on these. Don't even think about sticking something under here to prise it up because if you snap these, they're very expensive. They're a couple hundred quid a piece. So uh, take good care of these. And when you put them back on, I'm going to put a little bit of silicon lubricant around for that seal to get a good grip. Right, spark plug change. Now, if you recall, I remember saying you would have to set the spark plug gap. Well, these are the official triumph parts from the part number cr 9 cr 8 eks and they come with the preset electrodes so we don't actually adjust that gap it'll be interesting to see what comes out the bike because i suspect they're more conventional ones so um, i don't understand why they've changed the part but who knows we'll see what the other one's like when it comes out i've got a 10 millimeter spark plug spanner so that's what fits on the new ones i'm assuming that will fit the old one we'll give it a quick check and then uh we'll get that spark plug out so now what typically happens is you've loosened off the spark plug and it's still in there and you need to get it out so there's two ways we can tackle that one is to stick some paper in there push it back on the spark plug and then hopefully it's got enough grip to lift it out but the way i tend to use it is i get one of these and they're one of the most useful tools on a motorcycle the bendy i've used this before in another video when i was threading cables but you push through and you get these little grabby hooks and you can pull things out so theoretically i'll just stick that down there open it up and out comes a spark plug by magic it's like fishing and as i suspected looking at that that's a conventional spark plug so why they're different I don't know. Anyhow, let's get the new ones in. So the torque settings for these is just 12 newton meters. That's not very tight at all. So we'll just, there we go. That is 12 newton meters. And hopefully the socket will come out and not stay in there. There we go. So that's the first one done. Now we need to just put the injector back in. So I'm going to give that a little spray of lubricant. So here's some silicon lubricant. 
Right, so we've got that little squirt of silicon lubricant on both parts. I'm going to just push that home now. And it goes on a lot easier than it came off, believe me. I'll just connect that back up. And then we'll be giving all this a clean in a minute. Right, number two, so repeater number one. Muscles to yank that out and we'll see how we get on with number three. But I'll come back when I've got all those done. So in any job, there's always the awkward one. And that is this one. This is too close to here to get my wrench in. Um, luckily, I've got this thing, which I've managed to get in to loosen it off. And I'm now unscrewing the spark plug. But I won't probably be able to get this out. <laughs> so I think that's loose. So I need to separate the extension bar from the socket to get the extension bar out and then try and get the socket and the spark plug out. See how that goes. Right, I've had a hell of a job with this last one because my sockets were hitting against this part and not allowing you to get things out. It meant the spark plug socket got left in in the tube and I had to sort of do some stick this in here and hold it at an angle to try and drag the thing out so i would highly recommend getting a 3 8 extension bar with a smaller head on it that might get you past that because the half inch is too big but i've managed to do that now so spark plugs in i couldn't torque it with a torque wrench but i've took my best guess with a, a fixed uh, t-bar because that's all i could fit in so after a battle, we've got all these back on. Check these seals are fully over. Nice and gripping on, because you don't want water getting any injectors. That's the end of your injectors. Right, I can do the next bit without the airbox on, which is the throttle balance. But I do have to put the petrol tank back on and connect everything back up. Now, that's just the really awkward bit you need software to do this it's not like carburetors where you can use a tool and the adjustment if you look at the throttle body and there's this thing sticking out here inside there's a flat head screw that's the adjuster for this injector then similarly on this one we look for the bit coming out and down there, it'll be hard to see where my finger is. Can I shine the light on it? I don't know. So you just follow this along. And down there is the other one. And then the third one is really hard to find. So again, you look at the injector. You look at the bit coming out, and it's coming out on this side. And you might possibly see it from here I'll try and put an arrow on if I can but it's really hard to see you have to feel it with your finger to find out where it is right in order to do the throttle balancing I've propped the tank up connected it back up and I need to be able to get in at these screws here here and the tricky one there I also need to connect up my computer but first I've got to start the bike and hopefully nothing will fall off and it won't blow up <laughs> uh, Right, let's get going with that Right, it's a bit noisy in there, some out here so I've hooked everything up and I'm doing the throttle balance on dealer tool See that but they're already balanced so I don't actually have to do anything which is a bit of a relief because that would be a pain in the bum getting at those screws so that'll have to wait for another video but for now I'm going to put this back together and then that is air filter spark plugs throttle balance all done I can see why Triumph charge Navy 900 pounds for this service um, it is a lot of work, a lot of time, um, but I like doing these things myself and 
I do clean everything as you've seen as I go along. So um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with what I've done here. This was quite a challenging task, especially this uh, leftmost cylinder. So I will be getting myself a 3 8 spark plug socket and extension bar and making sure it goes in there. I don't think you could get a, a quarter inch one, but you never know. A um, quarter inch would definitely be better. Uh, but that was the hardest part of the job was getting that blooming spark plug in the socket out. Right, like I say, I'm going to let that cool down and then I'm going to um, put it back together and then we're ready for commuting again on Monday. Right, we're going to screw the airbox down and there's a specific way these have to be done. So I will include this in the description if I can. But if you look there, it's showing you from the manual the order you have to do. So it's top middle, bottom middle, top right, bot top left, bottom right, bottom left. That's easy to remember, isn't it? Right, very quick check of that. It's six Newton meters, so it's not very tight at all. Um, I think my uh, torque wrench only goes down to 10. So that's all back together. Next job, put the petrol tank on properly. And then I think when I've got the fairings off, I'm going to give the bike a wash so I can get out a lot more and rebuild the fairings. Um, I wouldn't say that was a, an easy job, but uh, yeah, it's nearly finished. All right, everyone, that is the bike put back together, how she was before, and washed. So the only thing I didn't do there was the valve clearances and I thought there's no point in doing them because um, I can't do anything about them if they're wrong. That's out of my depth so uh, it's running fine. People say you'll know if there was a problem with your valve clearances on takeover. What I'll do is I'll wait till the next big service and then I'll probably get the valve clearances done. Not by a Triumph but by someone I know and trust. So um, that's that. Next part, we've got the forks to do. So that is uh, new fork oil, head stop bearing uh, lubrication and resetting. And then, uh, and then the final part, um, if I need to do it, is going to be just relubricating the linkages on the suspension. So I hope you found that one useful. Like I say, that is not an easy job to do and Getting, the, getting that uh, leftmost spark plug out was a nightmare. But the job's done, and uh, that's part four concluded. If you like this and you want to see the others, check check the library. Um, they're under the playlist garage. And um, if you want to see more, then why not hit the subscribe, uh, hit the like, share the things. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again in another one, hopefully.